Hi everyone, my name is Zenzo, and today I'm going to share with you my list of five different types of large aquarium fish. I won't be calling these monster fish, although some might fit that category. More so, this video is aimed at those of you with large aquariums that are wondering what type of fish you might want to try. There are many types of large fish, some that probably should only be kept by very experienced fish keepers, and some that require at least five to 600 gallon tanks. In this video, I'm going to avoid those and focus on easier large fish. Make sure to watch until the end as I have a bonus category that may help you and your wallets. The first fish that I'm going to recommend is one that would do well in your large community tank, the Oscar Cichlid. Oscar Cichlids are one of the most popular fish sold at pet stores because of their beautiful colors and unique personalities. They are intelligent enough to recognize you as their owner, will come up to the front of the tank to greet you, and can even be trained to eat out of your hand. Oscars are found in countries all over South America, mostly in slow moving waters that have tree roots, rocks, or other shelters for them to hang around. While you may see juveniles at the pet store around two to three inches long, adults usually reach 10 to 12 inches or more. In fact, they often rapidly grow and achieve two thirds of their adult size within the first six to 12 months. Then development slows for the rest of their 10 to 20 year lifespan. This cichlid comes with big bubble eyes and an assortment of color variations. The most common type is a tiger Oscar with its bold red orange markings against black background. Other varieties include albino, lutino, red, lemon, black and white, and long fin. While some people say that a 55 gallon tank is the minimum for one Oscar, we personally believe that 75 gallons is better so that they have more swimming space to turn around. For two Oscars, look for an aquarium that is five to six feet in length or more and holds at least 100 gallons. In my opinion, if you want to have three or more, 150 gallon tank or larger would be best as they can get a little bit territorial with one another. Despite their large size though, they're not overly aggressive except during spawning seasons and can be picked on by other big fish, so choose their tank mates carefully. We've successfully kept them with bigger peaceful fish like silver dollars, certain plecos, and other medium sized South American cichlids. These omnivores tend to prefer proteins, but they will consume anything edible they can find. In the wild, their diets include insects, crustaceans, worms, small fish, fruits and nuts that fall into the water, and other vegetation. We like to feed them a quality pellet or stick food supplemented with freeze dried insects and krill. The second fish that I'm gonna recommend is for that 55 to 75 gallon tank where you just wanna have one solo fish. In this tank, I'm gonna recommend the flower horn. This hybrid New World cichlid is known for having jaw dropping colorful patterns and a large nuchal hump that grows on the head of males. Flower horns are especially valued in certain Asian cultures because they are thought to bring good luck and prosperity. While flower horns are quite playful and personable towards their human owners, they can be fairly aggressive towards other smaller animals in their territory. When you first get a flower horn juvenile, you may keep it in a 40 gallon breeder. When it gets bigger, we recommend eventually upgrading to a 55 or 75 gallon aquarium to accommodate its impressive adult size. Flower horns tend to be a bit rough on their environment as they can be quite destructive and curious, uprooting plants, digging in substrate, and pushing decorations around. Scape your tank appropriately and do not be dismayed when they play in their tank and redecorate. Having tough equipment like the aquarium co-op heater can be handy with these fish. Flower horns are omnivorous, so feeding a variety of high quality foods is important. Be careful not to overfeed as they have a healthy appetite and can sometimes be overfed if you're not paying attention to how much you're feeding them. The third category of fish is for those of you that want an oddball fish. For this, I'm gonna recommend a Bashir. Bashir, Bashir, the actual correct way to say it is Bashir, but both are accepted. Bashirs are tropical fish that have been around for an extremely long time, which also contributes to their prehistoric appearance. If you want a fish that is a true oddball that resembles Godzilla or some prehistoric dinosaur, this is your fish. Bashirs are mostly found in rivers and tributaries along the Nile River in Northeast Africa. Bashirs have poor vision due to the murky, slow moving waters that they come from, so they mostly rely on their strong sense of smell, as well as their ability to sense electricity in the water. Depending on the type that you choose, they will range between 12 inches up to a couple of feet in length. Because of this, it is recommended to have them in larger aquariums, 75 gallons or so for smaller variants and larger tanks for the bigger ones. They are not picky when it comes to your tank setup or decor. However, these fish are carnivores that feed and forage on the bottom of the tank. So choosing the appropriate type of substrate is important. A sandy substrate is recommended or bare bottom. They are not overly aggressive and can be kept with other fish as long as they're not large enough to get eaten. They would do well in the community Oscar tank that I mentioned earlier. Now maybe you're wanting a large schooling fish that can cohabitate with some of the fish mentioned earlier, like the Bashirs and Oscar. For the fourth fish on this list, I'm gonna recommend the Silver Dollar. 
Silver dollars are tropical fish that originate in rivers throughout South America. They have tall, flat bodies that are circular in appearance, which is how they got their silver dollar name. The majority of their body is covered in shiny silver scales. For a schooling or shoaling fish, they can grow quite large, between six to eight inches in length, and come in a few variants like red hooks, spotted, and tiger silver dollars. Silver dollars are hardy and durable fish that can be kept in a wide range of conditions. Because they are fast swimmers, like to be in groups, and have a tendency to sometimes get a little bit spooked, it is best to keep them in tanks of at least 75 gallons. Larger is better as it will give them more space and reduces the likelihood of them banging into glass or decorations if startled. Having some decor that allows them to hide is good, and we recommend keeping them in a group of at least five so that they feel safer. Silver dollars are omnivores, but they eat a lot of vegetation in the wild. Because of this, it is important to provide them with a plant or algae-based food frequently. This also means that most plants will not fare well in a silver dollar aquarium. If you do choose to have plants with them, try variants that are unlikely to get eaten, like java fern, java moss, hornwort, and other plants that most fish avoid eating. The fifth fish that I'm gonna recommend is gonna be for those of you looking for a large bottom-dwelling fish. For this, I'm gonna recommend clown loaches. Clown loaches are large and beautiful loaches that originate from the western islands of Indonesia. The clown loach gets its common name from its colorful appearance consisting of bright red-orange fins, a yellow tan body, and three prominent black bands. They also exhibit silly clown-like antics such as lying on their sides to sleep, making clicking sounds that communicate, and piling on top of each other in a tight corner. We've even seen a clown loach pick up a little stone with its mouth while other clown loaches chase it around like a pack of playful puppies. Clown loaches are typically sold as relatively small juveniles in pet stores, and most people do not realize how big they get because they grow so slowly. In our care, they've reached lengths of 12 to 13 inches long with a beefy body of five to six inches tall. Because they are slow growers, smaller clown loaches can be kept in a 55 gallon aquarium, but will need to be moved to larger tanks as they grow. Clown loaches are not overly aggressive, although they may spar with one another and can be kept in a variety of aquariums like community aquariums, African cichlid tanks, and oddball tanks. The main thing to note when keeping this fish is that they prefer warmer temperatures than most fish. Another thing to watch out for is they can be susceptible to catching ick. They feel more secure in groups, so the more you have together, the less they will hide and the more you will see them out and about in the aquarium. Clown loaches are not picky eaters and will scavenge the bottom of the aquarium for food. Clown loaches are omnivores but prefer protein-heavy diets of sinking pellets, bloodworms, mollusks, and will eat vegetables like cooked zucchini. Don't add any pet snails to your clown loach tank as they will become a snack for your clown loaches. Because what list is complete without a bonus category, here's one more idea. Okay, so you have a large aquarium, but maybe after everything that you've spent to set it up, you don't have a lot of money left over for expensive fish. Not to worry, the bonus category is gonna be bargain fish. Now, oftentimes fish stores will have a tank with some large fish that people have brought into the store because they can no longer care for them. Oftentimes it may be something like a large common blocosimus, maybe a large cichlid, or some type of catfish. Sometimes they might even have fish that we've mentioned in this video. These fish are usually fish that the stores wanna get rid of so they can be had for great prices. My advice here is to let the store owner or the employee know that you have a large tank and can care for the fish that they are moving on. And maybe they'll give you a great deal knowing that the fish most likely will have a forever home in your tank and it won't find its way back to their store. This is a great way to find some amazing large fish that can complement some of the other fish mentioned in this video. I hope that this video gave you some ideas on some larger fish to keep. Now let us know what are some other fish that people should consider when shopping for large aquarium fish. Let us know by commenting down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to enjoy nature daily and check out this video right here.